Welcome to our review on non-communicable diseases. So we've spent the past few videos looking at communicable diseases, the ones that spread from person to person or plant to plant, but we also have non-communicable diseases. These are ones that do not spread from one individual to another. However, there are certain things that will trigger these non-communicable diseases in people. The first one of these things that could act as a risk factor for certain diseases is smoking. So when we consider tobacco, that contains over 4,000 chemicals, including 43 that are known carcinogens, so those are chemicals that we know cause cancer, and 400 other toxins. And I've given you a lovely array of pictures of things that you find in a cigarette at the bottom. So everything from the hydrogen cyanide in the gas chambers to things like the arsenic to toilet cleaners and batteries and car exhausts, a whole range of delightful substances that you can take into your body if you choose to smoke. The good news is that you don't need to know all 4,000 chemicals inside tobacco for your exams. You only need to know four of them. First one is tar, which is a carcinogenic, so a cancer causing substance that actually collects inside the lungs. So on the left there, you can see a lovely healthy lungs, nice and pink and quite spongy if you were to poke it. And on the right, that deformed looking object is a tar filled lung. So that's the effect of smoking many cigarettes a day for a good few years. Nicotine is our next chemical, which is the addictive drug that's not only addictive, but it also affects your nervous system, making the heart beat faster and narrowing blood vessels. Third chemical is carbon monoxide. That one is going to bind irreversibly to haemoglobin inside your red blood cells, which means they can carry less oxygen and therefore your heart has to work harder to get the cells the oxygen they need. And the last one, the particulates, these are small pieces of solid that end up becoming engulfed by the white blood cells. Once that's happened, an enzyme is released and that's actually going to weaken the walls of the alveoli, which are little air sacs in the lungs, which leads to a condition called emphysema. The second risk factor to non-communicable diseases is alcohol consumption. So alcohol that you drink contains ethanol and that's going to affect the nervous system. So alcohol acts as a depressant, which means it's going to slow down the body's reactions. And at the bottom there, I've just given you a little chart to give you an idea of when we talk about units of alcohol, actually how much it is. So half a pint of beer is the equivalent to one unit. And considering we actually have the advice that only two units a day are recommended for women, that would mean only one pint of beer in that example. If we consider the effects of alcohol, we can break them up into short term effects and long term effects. So the short term effects are basically the things that you see when you're around people who've been drinking. So they will have blurred vision. So if you've ever tried watching someone try to get a key in a keyhole after a night of drinking, it's where they have that real look of concentration on their face to try to get in, but keep missing because they can't actually see where the keyhole is anymore. It's where they fall down quite a lot, tripping over their own feet and just ending up flailing on the floor randomly. They have much slower reaction times and there could be the change in behavior. So that normal happy go lucky person that when they've had a few to drink, just randomly bursts into tears or becomes the violent one in the group. So their behavior is not what you'd necessarily expect. However, when you stop drinking, those things do luckily go away again. Long term effects, however, don't go away once you stop drinking. These are things like cirrhosis of the liver. You can get stomach ulcers, heart disease and brain damage. So when we're talking about cirrhosis, what we're referring to is when healthy liver cells have been replaced with this fat or fibrous tissue, which means that your liver is therefore far less effective at being able to remove toxins from your body. So on the left, we have a lovely healthy liver. On the right, that would be a liver suffering with a severe case of cirrhosis. So you can see the very clear difference between them. And hopefully just on site, you can work out the one on the left is gonna be able to do its job. The one on the right, 
not so much and there's a reason that Cornell University have taken a picture of it that person wasn't around for long hopefully at the end of this video you can state some examples of non-communicable diseases and describe the link between lifestyle choices and some of these forms of non-communicable disease